No school of snook. We were just creeping up this channel right here. Just can't believe it. that was excellent. It ate that Everglades SB. Puglisi fly. Let's get this guy back in the water and celebrate the victory. How cool is it? They're very exciting fish. Uh, they attack well, they're aggressive, and the habitat they live in can vary quite dramatically from one situation to the next. So uh, you could fish them on an open beach where there might be waves crashing up on the shore and it make making the water a little bit dirty and milky. Uh, but most commonly, we're gonna be fishing them in places that look like this over here, right up under these mangroves. So go ahead and come on in here. And this would be very common for these snook to be living way up under the mangroves like this right here. They love to get way back in there and live up underneath that brush canopy. So it's a great marksmanship game trying to get your fly up under those mangroves. There are certain tides that are more favorable for fishing snook. Generally the lowest tides uh, possible draw the snook out to the edges and sometimes even across open flats. Another thing to know about snook is they generally prefer some freshwater influence, so they're generally going to be near the mainland uh, and and right up against kind of the the main shorelines. You're not going to find snook typically way out in the open flats like you are permit or bonefish and other open water species. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of information about where snook live. Next, we're going to talk about tackle. All right, so let's talk tackle for snook fishing. The tackle setup is pretty simple. Uh, Leader-wise, uh, snook have some very sharp edges to their mouth. Their mouth feels like really a brace of sandpaper on the inside, and they have some very sharp edges, and they'll just simply cut anything uh, that's too light. So we have what's called a shock tippet, and that's gonna be tied on near your fly. And for me, that happens to be 40 pound test, Scientific Angler's fluorocarbon. And in case you haven't seen it, there's links in the video description to all the products I'm mentioning here today. What I like is I like about seven feet of straight 40 pound fluorocarbon. I'm a pretty good caster at getting that fly to turn over. I like about a seven foot leader. Many guides, if you're working really tight to the mangroves, they won't control. They'll make your leader as short as about four feet just to get that nice turnover. So I put a perfection loop in one end all the way down here uh, to, to my fly on the other end. As far as flies go, uh, flies should be very light and very slow sinking flies. Uh, something where you could set the fly down and, and maybe wait for the fish appro to approach and that fly is not just going to drop and fall down to the bottom, get stuck in the turtle grass or in the mud or something like that. So uh, I like slow sinking flies, that's, a, that's an Everglades SP, that's, we have lots of snook flies, just check out the, the link in the video description. But a couple of others would be like an A to Z and uh, one of my personal favorites, the suspended tarpon shrimp is a great fly. So flies aren't particularly large. Um, they should be very light and unweighted and so that they can sink slow. Um, another thing is just about the leaders, just one thing I'll mention is uh, I carry my Dinez, this tippet. I've done a different review on this, but keeping that tippet handy and being able to switch, say, from a, a permit setup to a snook setup very, very quickly would be something that you wanna make sure you understand the different leaders for the different species so that you're able to change quickly and not rely on your guide to make all of those changes for you because I like to keep the guides doing what they do best and that's getting you on the fish and getting you to the fish. You should be able to rig up your own stuff. As far as rod selection goes, uh, saltwater specific rods are just a really good idea in general. Um, you could hit some baby tarpon uh, while pursuing snook or some barracuda and other things and it's nice to have a good tough rod that can handle a broad workload. Uh, I happen to be using a 9 weight today and I have a 10 weight floating line on it, a Rio Flats Pro, and I think that rod loads up really great at close range when I overweight it by, by one. What you don't want is you don't want shooting head style lines. Those are gonna run away from you like an outbound short type line and you're gonna wind up up in the trees constantly. You want some type of line that you can adequate, you can measure distance very carefully. There are a few rod models on the market. The Sage payload for one is a little bit shorter at eight foot nine inches and it loads really easy with bigger flies up close. But any saltwater rod in the seven, eight or nine weight range would be appropriate for snook. 
nine being a good choice because it's a little bit more durable. You're gonna hang up with the mangroves from time to time and you, you may ask it to, to battle some rough customers. As far as size of snook goes, if you catch a 15 pound snook, you've done something. That's a very, very nice snook. Snook are gonna range from anywhere from three or four pounds on the small side, all the way up to a world record would be in the 40 pound range, maybe more, but on the fly, a snook up to, you know, in that 15 to 20 pound range, you've really done something there. Next, we're gonna talk about a few strategies on fly placement, stripping, and some casting tips for you as well. For snook, like all saltwater species, the better caster you are, the more success you're gonna have. And it's not always gonna be a long cast, but it needs to be accurate. Uh, placement of the fly on snook should be very close to the fish. Um, if we're working against the mangroves like this right here, I would want to be able to put my fly just 12 inches away from the fish. Um, snook aren't particularly spooky, but you do need to be aware to, to get the fly out in front of the fish. So when in doubt, a little bit further away is of course going to be better. But we need to make a very accurate cast, and we need to be able to throw that fly right up close to the mangroves like that without actually getting the fly in the trees. So at home you can practice this, and what I'm going to try to do is I'm trying to throw a very tight hook so that my fly is very close to the water and can shoot in like so. So I'm working on that. It's a little bit of a sidearm, but you notice my rod tip is stopping way up here. My rod tip's now coming down to the water. So for you opportunity to have a snook that's in open water. Snook are one of the few species where it's, it's it's a good idea to cast far beyond the fish and bring the fly back towards them. Permit especially, I've just not found them to like a, something swimming at them very much. Bonefish the same thing, but boy, a snook, if, if, if the fish is traveling like so and we can throw beyond the fish and just throw past it, again, we want to come right into our strip and get that rod tip down very low. And the strip for snook is going to be slower than most species. It's going to be a relatively long, slow strip. For snook, you're likely going to be guided, and most of the chances chances are you're probably going to be in the boat as well. It's, a, it's kind of a semi-unique semi opportunity to wade for snook. So the guide will, will talk you through the cadence based on that fish's body language and behavior. So the snook is going to be... Um, a, a slower strip and then slowly or gradually accelerating as the fish begins to attack and eat. They, they really inhale big. They have very large gills. They're going to flex. It's a very exciting take and they'll often take the fly in a big boil right on the surface. The setting the hook with snook is going to be much like most other species. Once that fish inhales, we're going to make sure our hands are out in front of us so that we can find the fish with our left hand like this and that gets the hook initially dug in, it finds a ridge, and then we're gonna pull the rod back into our stomach like so. And if, if, if the fish has turned and pulled significant weight to the point where you're at a tug of war, the hook is set. If the fish's momentum is still coming at you, resist the temptation to lift that rod and just keep that rod right down on the water or even in the water stripping line until we develop a temporary tug of war, kind of a test of wills and then the fish is probably gonna jump like crazy and jump out of the water. They're gonna shake their head and try to get rid of that. We want low rod angles, really encouraging that fish to stay back in the water. They tend to stay hooked better than tarpon. Tarpon are very tough to keep hooked when they jump. And snook aren't particularly great fighting fish, but they are very exciting on the take. They jump like crazy. I've had just an amazing experience snook fishing. I think that they're absolutely a great species. And as long as you have the tackle set right, you're gonna be able to go have some su success on snook when given the opportunity. If the guide says it's a good day for snook, that probably means the tides are right and it's a good day for snook and you should take advantage of it.